Man, this kid is an asshole. He rides balloons to the moon to fish for what I guess is cloud trout. By the way, you know the dark part of the moon is supposed to be solid and not a nesting croak for delinquent kids, right? Also, as if you needed any more proof that DreamWorks desperately wants to be Pixar, they rip off the classic scene from Up for the opening logo. Wait, Up came out two years after this? Well, DreamWorks still totally wants to be Pixar. Jesus, movie, are you trying to go all Harry Potter on us? I know Prisoner of Azkaban was that series' third entry, but this is a totally different franchise, full of magical creatures and sentient animals and wizards and apparating and a protagonist with two trusted allies and... Wait. This is worse than love letters! I hate dinner theater! Then why the f*** are you even here? Doesn't look like anyone at your table is excited to be here, so it's not like you got dragged in against your will. Me too! So, Pinocchio secretly loves dinner theater? And for that reason we get this cheap wooden joke? At least this movie's telling me early on what passes for humor. Do you mind? Do you mind? Boring! Gingerbread Man would go on to transform into a different magical creature, Twitter Troll. How is this vanity mirror even lit up? You might say candles, but then I'd call you a filthy liar, because this is a steady light bulb type of light. Oh yeah, remember that storyline about the fairy godmother in the last movie? No? Me either. I had to Wikipedia that Point is, at least the second movie had the courtesy to not depend totally on having the knowledge of what happened in the first one. I get that this is a bed fit for a king, but before he turned back into a frog, a regular sized king slept here, right? With his regular sized wife, but it can easily fit two grown ass ogres? Oh. <laughs> Morning breath. I know. Isn't it wonderful? I'm glad that the Shrek franchise basically became the Addams Family over time. Haha, <laughs> everything that is terrible to us is wonderful to them! Nice try, movie, but no matter how cute you try and make these dragon donkey babies, I'm always going to remember that they're a crossbred, unholy abomination against God and man. Movie somehow misses the chance to do something completely on brand and truthful by not calling this Shrek the turd. I'm not gonna play this song for a number of reasons, but just trust me. It's Royal Pain by The Eels, which is a great song by an awesome band. So I continue to wonder how the f the Shrek franchise can be so good at musicking while being so terrible at movie. Shrek oh! <laughs> Remember that time that Shrek either killed or maimed a dude in front of a large crowd with no repercussions? <laughs> Wait a minute, how the f did the sails catch fire? I suppose that's the joke, but damn it, I'm gonna be thinking about those sails for the rest of the movie. Damn movie, you've already ripped off Holy Grail with the coconuts and Dumb and Dumber with the toenail grinder in the first five minutes. You do know the difference between homage and outright theft, right? No? All right, carry on. Yeah, but the king and queen from the last movie never dress like this. Movie will go to all the length for one stupid f***ing sight cat. Oh yeah, Shrek. scratch that thing. You got it, you love it. Hey, get your fat bastard out of my Shrek. Who do you think we're kidding? I am an ogre! Isn't this the plot point of every Shrek movie? And how many times does he have to remind us of this? What if, theoretically, Yeah? They were little ogre feet. Damn, if this movie takes a hard left into ogre porn, I gotta say, I'd be much more on board. Have you seen a baby lately? They just eat and poop and they cry when they poop? Father, listing all the reasons babies are terrible cliche aside, I think this was just the movie's excuse to say poop a million times in five seconds. Wait, Shrek has nipples? Like, has he always had nipples? And I've just never noticed it? And even so, what are they for? I haven't had this many questions about unnecessary nipples since Batman and Robin. Don't forget to pay the gardener, Lillian. For explaining. I am proud to call you my son. And I'm proud to call you my frog king dad-in-law. Oh, Shrek, never change. You had Farquaad in the first movie, and you crazy comic dispensers have cracked up all the censors with this double entendre. The frog king is dead. Movie directly inspires the most irritating part of Deadpool 2. It's a funeral, so therefore it must rain no matter what. At this point in the movie, they're playing the Wings version of Live and Let Die, and I have to ask, did anyone actually think this sh through? This is not a mournful song that pays respect to a morose occasion, like Hallelujah did in the first Shrek. It's a goddamn Bond theme. Cinderella is in far, far away right now. Eating bonbons? Wait, but Prince Charming just named off all the actual plots that the villains in the pub were involved with. If Cinderella is in this universe, she should be married to Charming, right? If you're gonna subvert fantasy movie, at least get your shit straight. Who wants their happily ever after? Yeah! The f Charming ordered fuzzy navels for everyone when he got to the bar, but Mabel hasn't made shit and the rest of the place has been busy threatening him for the last two minutes. So where the hell did these drinks come from? Also, is that really a fuzzy navel? I thought it's just peach and orange juice, but this shit's got like pineapple and lime and... I mean, it could be a fuzzy navel. Just like the drink Jason Bateman orders in Game Night could be a Harvey Wallbanger. But I'm sending it until I receive confirmation. I don't know you, but I like to. Why can none of the other cats speak? These cartoons are really gonna have to get to the bottom of this animal language puzzle. Also, man, this franchise assumes people have a lot of interest in anthropomorphized sexual activity. Also, also, why can't Fiona go on this voyage too? Arthur is her family, right? And she's been a badass up until now. Remember that Matrix bullshit against Robin Hood in the first movie? Sure, she's pregnant, but Shrek doesn't know that. And you, my friend, are royally... What? 
screwed? Is that any worse than the Frog King thing this movie got away with earlier? A movie that barely scratches feature length has time for an extended dream sequence. Better out than in, I always say. Yes, you do, in every f***ing Shrek movie. When a man has a certain feelings for a woman... I know how it happened! Huh, and here all this time my Shrek fanfic had him pulling out and finishing on Fiona's tits. How does it happen? Dude, if you're gonna make this joke, make it with a character that hasn't already fathered at least five offspring. When have you ever heard the phrase, as sweet as an ogre, or as nurturing as an ogre? We f***ing get it, ogres are terrible, you're worried about that, Jesus, give it a rest. How did Shrek even know where to go? Harold only got out Arthur's name before he croaked, and it didn't even seem like Lillian knew he existed. Bro, don't burn all my frankincense and myrrh. Yes, at least one of the screenwriters fought tooth and bong to keep this f***ing stoner joke in the script. Congratulations, guy who wrote Caddyshack 2 and Wild Wild West. By how did you receive the wedgies when you are clearly not the wearer of the underpants? Let's just say some things are better left unsaid and leave it at that. The only reason you are leaving this unsaid is because it is a total lie. The fact that Donkey is even leaving something unsaid is proof enough for me. So then I was all like, I'd rather get the Black Plague and lock myself in an Iron Maiden than go out with you. Lines like this illustrate why movies like Shrek should stay at one or two chapters. Because every single time the dialogue peppers medieval references into modern lingo, it begins to pile up and become stale. <laughs> Man, this movie's so derivative of other movies that I totally believe that horse just got hit by a golf ball. Yeah, you better run, you little punk no goodnicks! Remind me why we're in high school for this sequence? I mean, I guess it's tangentially related to the Arthurian fable, but why f***ing high school? What sense does this make to any of this goddamn story? Thank you to Professor Primbottom and his invigorating lecture on how to just say nay. I mean, do you see what I mean? They got a million of them, folks. Artie a king? More like the mayor of Loserville. <laughs> Geez, even when the movie appears to try to be self-aware, it's so stupid you think it might actually be serious. It's for the poopies. Wait, babies poop? Everyone poops, beauty. <sighs> I'm adding a hundred sins for the poop jokes and the anachronistic way people talk in this movie. It's goddamn nauseating. Also, this is a quick-ass baby shower, right? Shrek can't have been gone long. We've only seen one night pass. Do ogre babies fully gestate in less than a week? I don't care what fantasy land you're living in, there is no way they could expect Fiona to fit into that <laughs> No way Dragon saw these assholes approaching, especially since we've seen how shitty she is at guarding castles in the previous movies. <laughs> <laughs> I see someone caught the golden snitch. What the hell are the trees from anyway? If they're Ents from Lord of the Rings, then they wouldn't be villains. If they're from Wizard of Oz, then they're really also not villains. And they should be sporting apples. What? Someone please tell me the logic of this joke. How does chasing people out of a bootery suddenly turn it into a hooters? I think the joke is that you can easily change bootery into hooters, and I'm sorry, I just don't get it. To the castle! Why didn't they go there in the first place then? They now have to climb up to the castle on foot just because they wanted to do some light looting? The only thing you're ever gonna be king of is king of the stupids! This line is appropriate, because this movie is definitely funnier than the 1996 Tom Arnold vehicle, The Stupids. And that's about it. Avast, ye cookie! Talking. Movie thinks it's got a cool and reflective shot, but if Hook is truly threatening Gingerbread Man directly to his face, this is an impossible angle. Screw me. Now everyone in this f***ing universe goes to high school? It wouldn't be inaccurate to assume that I couldn't exactly not say that this or is not. Let's combine all the stuff that's terrible about this movie with the shrill character voices and f guys, I might have to stop sending this movie. It's that freaking awful. <laughs> The sin counter says I have to finish this, and I always do what the master says. I just figured everyone forgot about me. Well, it did get a little foggy after you left in sync, but justified was the mad I'm going back! Back to what? How is this even a struggle? Shrek's been shown to have incredible strength, and movie's gone to great lengths to show us what a pipsqueak Artie is, even if he's in panic mode. Far, far away from you. You get back here, young man, and I mean it. Guy who will soon be a father learns fathering with the surrogate son during an adventure cliche. I was merely a victim of a level three fatigue, and at the request of my therapist. This is Eric Idle's voice, right? Because it sounds so much like John Oliver that I'll never be able to listen to John Oliver again without thinking he stole Eric Idle's mojo to further his career. This is lame. Ow! You're lame! Somehow the argument between Justin Timberlake and the director made it into the actual movie. I get it. My dad left. So what? Uther issues. Just thought I might help set the mood! Whenever the movie finds itself in a rut, somebody sings or plays a modern song that was popular in its day, but relatively obscure now, for all the laughs. And inevitably, all the other characters hate the song and scorn the person for singing it or playing it. This movie is so tired that it's practically Zequel. Maybe it just bothers you that I was voted fairest in the land. Man, in a sea of bad scenes made by talented people in this movie, the princess scenes are absolutely the baddest. We're gonna get inside and find out what Charming's up to. How does Fiona know? 
know that it was Prince Charming that attacked the castle. He was way too far away for her to see him before they escaped. And even if she had seen him, there were like dozens of other well-known villains that could have been the ringleader. But how long have they been wandering the catacombs? Like minutes, right? Maybe a couple hours? But in that time, Charming's taken over the entire city and carved out an image of his head into the hedges? If Rapunzel was on Charming's side this whole time, why did she even bother going into the secret passage with the rest of the princesses? Flipping the bird. Also, movie franchise can't resist the chance to kill yet another bird. As if it's got a vendetta or some ah! If the trees are this angry and have been here this whole night, then why didn't they attack them in their sleep? Oh, sh Hook's piano blew up. The whole plan's ruined. Run for it, even though we have nowhere to go. I know you can do it. I said, forget it. Character says he's not going to do something before immediately doing that thing cliche. I've been abracadabbered into a fancy feast and second-rate sidekick! Is there an actual plot to this movie? Or was this entire thing greenlit as is after the first brainstorming meeting? Yeah, you should think about getting yourself a pair of pants. <laughs> I feel all exposed and nasty! What the f*** is he talking about? Donkey doesn't wear pants? This is the second time Donkey's mentioned something about pants. Like there's some weird character trait where he's delusional about pants he suddenly wears. How did Far Far Away shut down so quickly? Again, it's only been a few days since Shrek even left. So even though Charming took over, the whole city wouldn't end up like Hill Valley and back to the future too that quickly. If you need to put five bucks into this machine to see Pinocchio, then who put five bucks in the first time? Look at this scene. You can see the machine on the left with Pinocchio inside of it. Did the witch that's walking away from it put five dollars into the machine and leave? Or is this machine a lie? He's a star, people! Hello! I'm so sorry about this, Mr. Shrek. This somehow works. Who told you to stop dancing? Wow, Charming got a lot of authoritarian capital out of one rousing speech at the bar and a round of fuzzy navels. Let me guess. Arthur. How does everyone now know who Arthur is, when the king only just mentioned him on his deathbed? He's an ogre. What did you expect? Whoa, hold on now. Wait just a f***ing second. Are you telling me Shrek is an ogre? When did this happen? Why didn't anyone say anything? So they're just gonna let him go? Uh, second rightful heir to the throne? Charming is still planning on killing Shrek, right? Seriously, this is the second sad music montage of the movie, and by my unofficial count, the 47th of the franchise. Also, the song that's playing is Damien Rice's Nine Crimes, which is about infidelity and Jesus movie. Just because a song is slow and dour doesn't mean it's perfect for a sad moment. Damn, this is a big castle to only have one cell to put all the dissidents in together. Huh? Who dat? I suppose the joke about Sleeping Beauty is that she's an archaleptic, and I understand that the deal with these Shrek movies is to be irreverent and interpret fairy tales in a skewed and humorous manner. But knowing that Sleeping Beauty only fell into her deep, deep sleep because of a curse and not because of some sort of sleeping disorder makes me wonder how long anyone thought about giving her more of a character than the tired narcolepsy nonsense. Yeah. If she could do this, why didn't she do it earlier? The fucking fuck is this shit? I mean, fuck. Also, see? There's a whole other cell right there. Why don't you just lie down? This dialogue was personally approved by Roger Goodell. Just out of habit. This is funny and all, but it's guaranteed that when we see all these women again, no one will be sporting a pair of pokies consistent with the choice. Who would have thought a monster like me deserves something as special as you? Guys, <coughs> does anyone feel that? <coughs> I think I got crushed by a heavy hand. <coughs> Man, you'd think there'd be a better way into the castle than this overly complicated plan. Like, couldn't Lillian have just headbutted an interior wall? Hey, how's it going? See, it's funny because she's ugly, even though she's apparently got attractive legs, and guys are horny. Laughing yet? He was using me. That's all there is to it. Shrek only said those things to protect you. This is one of the only times when saying something or not saying something in order to protect you is actually used correctly. But my sins filter still wants to sin it, simply because they said those magic words that I hate. So after Prince Charming became king, he still wanted to put on this stupid play about beating Shrek, like he did at the beginning of the movie, when he was clearly at his lowest point. Why not just be king? Not like he even knew Shrek was in line to be the heir. What the f*** is this movie? You're about to enter a world of pain with which you are not Familiar. Really wish they'd given this warning at the beginning of the movie. That's actually a very nice leotard. Thank you. Do they come in men's sizes? This has got to be like the fifth man is a woman joke in the movie, but I'm too pissed at it to go check. Just like every Shrek movie, the dragon comes in to ex machina the proceedings. feel like they could just take this dragon anywhere and no one would ever f*** with them during their stupid schemes, but who am I to judge? I'm not even mad about the stupid poop joke. I'm just sad that everyone f***ing does this joke, and it's neither funny nor clever, no matter what character is doing it. It will not ruin things this time, Ogre. Kill it! But make sure to do it all slow and stuff so I can actually finish jerking off for once. The thing that matters most is what you think of yourself. Is anyone buying this shit? Is this speech really going to turn the tide here? God damn it. Holy shit. This could not be more telegraphed. 
but no one moved a muscle except the one motherfucker who's chained to the floor. Yay! The guy we've never met nor heard about is going to be king! Woohoo! I have something much more important in mind. What? So Shrek's cool with the fatherhood now? He just faced down an asshole that wanted to kill him and let Artie take over as king? And nothing about that would prepare him for having a kit. Plus, I had a perfect Cameron Diaz audio outtake from Vanilla Sky queued up for whatever Fiona inevitably yelled at Shrek for being a dick. Damn it, this movie for that alone. Where's the baby? I guess everyone thought this guy was going to be such a hit that the filmmakers gave him another scene at the end. That's too bad. I was kind of hoping they forgot about him. I hate so much about the things that you choose to be. Put some back into it, people! This isn't working! If you think this whole mad scene ain't dope, I feel you. Don't mess with me, I'm one crazy mofo. I had to pop a cop because he wasn't giving me my props in Oaktown. So, so just go! I'm gone. Go then. I am. Go. I'm gone. I am no tree. You've got two empty halves of coconut and you're banging them together. Once upon a time, someone decided that we were the losers. Welcome to the Losers Club, Master! Eat him, eat him, eat him! Get in my belly! Fox Force 5. Fox is in where a bunch of foxy chicks. Force is in where a force to be reckoned with. And 5 is in there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of us.